Now I want to talk about what other types of reviews there are. So systematic reviews are sort of the most known and the most talked about, but sometimes and in specific disciplines, we might be using systematic review terminology, but when it comes to the actual definition of things, what we might be thinking about is something a little bit different. And so if you read through the Grant and Booth article that we sent in advance, um, it goes through 14 different types of reviews. And it goes you know, much more into depth. And so this chart that I've put together here is sort of adapted from based on the chart that they have in that work. Um, but these are really the ones that we see most often. And so when you come to a librarian for that initial consultation on your systematic review, we're probably gonna talk through what your research question is, what your goals are to determine if a systematic review is really the best methodology or if maybe one of these other types of reviews is gonna fit your purposes a little bit better. And so the, the first one here is sort of the most common is this narrative also called a literature review. It's just sort of generally, we're taking a look at this, the state of the literature, right? And it may or may not have a comprehensive searching component. Usually it doesn't really have that critical assessment appraisal of the studies and then it'll have a narrative synthesis. This is a little bit different from a systematized review. And so sometimes depending on what your time frame is, you may not have time to do the full systematic review methodology with all of the critical appraisal and you know with the the analysis piece that might you know be important for a systematic review. And so instead of doing a full systematic review, we might recommend a review that is systematized. You're taking bits and pieces from those methodologies to do a systematized review without it being a systematic or a scoping or an umbrella review in and of itself. I personally work a lot with scoping reviews and a lot of times I find when researchers come to me interested in a systematic review, they're really more interested in doing a scoping review because this is a little bit broader and it's just, it's taking a look at the scope of uh, the research that's out there. Um, and that's not to say that there won't be a little bit of scoping within a systematic review because that's gonna be a piece of a systematic review too. It's just, you know, how much emphasis are you placing on getting an idea of what the state of the literature is out there. And then finally, umbrella reviews, which is a review of reviews. When there's so many reviews on a topic out there, you might wanna do a review of a review. To sort of round all of this out, there is this really great decision tree um, from Cornell. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on this and I can, I can stick this link in the chat as well so that you have access to this. And this is a great thing to sort of think through as you're getting started, um, just asking you questions about what type of review is going to be best for you. And so as you're thinking through this process, um, feel free to use this. And these are similar questions to what um, librarians will ask you when you come to us asking about a systematic review and if you should conduct one, how to conduct one, all of those things.